It's been five days since we left Cape Town. Um, we've traveled about 450 nautical miles and we are cruising through the fog right now and we should be to Luritz in about 20 miles. So hopefully we reach there today. Previously on Delos, we leave Cape Town and have an incredible sail up the coast get stuck in some creepy fog on the coast of Namibia, just as our radar fails. Lad! The fog is lifting just in time. <laughs> the fog is so dense and then it's just, boof, it's just gone. And that's my end. <laughs> ah, <laughs> like right oh, there. Like, like right there. Like look at Oh, whoa, it. we're super close. <laughs> whoa. Ooh, our first sighting of dunes. Welcome to Namibia, the skeleton coast. <laughs> we just got a few more miles and then we'll get in the harbor. Mr. Brady is fully in control of the situation, it looks like. Hello, Luders, Port Control. This is the sailing vessel Delos, over. Sailing vessel Delos, Port Control. Flying on channel 1 2. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We're about two nautical miles away from the entrance to the harbor. Wait, copy that. Uh... And just give me some of your particulars as well. You can spell for me the name of the yacht, number of crew on board, and the skipper's name. Yeah, so the name of the yacht is Delos, Delta, Echo, Lima, Oscar, Sierra. And we are six POV, six people on board. Process, I will liaise with customers in immigration to let them know of your presence. Okay, thank you very much, and see you soon. Pleasure. Sweet place. Got like a nice little thing here, and uh, pretty keen to check it out. Ludritz is a town of only a few thousand, located in the vast Namibian desert. Surrounded by sand dunes, everything is brought in by truck. 
except the diamonds of course, which are the reason why this little German outpost exists in the first place. I have a good feeling about this place. Do you? It seems really cool so far, yeah. But like just the vibe is like quite relaxed and everybody's just like I don't know, and it's walking distance to everything in town. I'm really looking forward to just walking around, like looking at all the different things. What is this weekend? This weekend it's a crayfish festival. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah. We just roll in for that, you know? Very it's planned. That's exactly what happens with Ellis. Manifesting. Awesome, I love crayfish though. <laughs> <laughs> but before we could stuff our faces with crayfish, it was time to do the check-in. This is the final formality, Brian. This is the customs clearance, bro. Once what? we're done with this, then we're sorted. And what does customs care about? They care about what you're bringing in. Pretty much it. <laughs> Pretty much you're taking out. <laughs> Finished. Welcome to Namibia. So easy, man. Got our clearance form. Took about two minutes, and uh, yeah, we're sorted. One of the easiest clearances I think in the entire world. So chill, isn't yeah, it? So chill. Cool. No, no money. We're good. Now it's mission for internet. Right, so we're so sorted now. We got our monies. Namibian dollars, which it turns out are exactly equal to South African rand. So one to one. One to one. That's and we can even use our rand here, which is crazy. <laughs> so we've got money, we've got internet, and uh, we're all checked in. And now it's time to chill and enjoy. On our way back to the docks and the rest of the crew, we found this little built-on shop. Check out these, but... Dr. Long's super thin ultra wet. <laughs> what is this? Dr. Long. What kind of a built on shop is this? Successfully used by millions worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. so. It's like a snooze This shop. is a long love condom. Rough study. How much is it for your love wrap? Secret of the East, magic attractant for men and women, attract your lover with this irresistible scent. Get to first base every time. Whoa, first base? Directions for use, apply liberally. To where? It just says, discontinue if rash appears. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the picture, I'm pretty sure it's Arnold Schwarzenegger kissing some girl. <laughs> it's some bill talk too, Brady. It's some bill talk too. Is the which is that one beef? That's beef. Okay. Some of that, please. So what are you getting, brother? Uh, we're getting some love drops, some tom yum, and some biltong. Good choice. I don't know. He wants to he wants to lure Namibian girls to him. <laughs> Will that work? Just it. I'll report back with the findings. Okay. Thank <laughs> 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 you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Yeah, don't drink it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Supply, don't drink it. Don't drink the love jobs. With Bill Tong in his pocket and love potion in his hand, Mr. Brady decided that the test was in order. First target, our girl crew. <laughs> Whoa, that's a lot, dude. That's a lot. Yeah, go hug him. Hey, what's up? Hi, how are you? Hey. What do you think? It's good. It's nice. Yeah. How do you feel? So good. Relax? Yes. Are you getting turned on at all? <laughs> turned on? Yeah, just wondering. From what? Just, just being around Brady. I guess. Oh, we, I was turned on until you got here. <laughs> oh! She wanted to hug me again. Look at that. Ooh, she can't get oh, it up. So first, uh, we'll, we'll report back with the findings. I think it needs to settle in a bit. Maybe give it a little bit more time. Yeah, give it a bit more time. Okay, we'll report back. We'll report back. The yeah. viewers. Let's go try it on Elizabeth. There it is. How are they? Very well. Do you want a bear, mate? How's that? 
It's good. It's a nice. Yeah, it was yeah. a nice hug. Like, what's happening? Good. <laughs> all right, all right. You just relax. Huh? Yeah, they didn't. They didn't like check. <laughs> yeah. Feel that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mmm, that's good. What is that? <laughs> what is that? Why, Why do your hands love? smell so good? Give me your fingers. <laughs> Just breathe. Breathe deep. Just breathe deep. Ready? Go in. <sighs> Nothing. Just breathe. How's that feel? You okay? She's overwhelmed. How do you she? feel? Good. <laughs> Surprisingly, very good. Just wanted to give you a hug and just make sure you were feeling nice today. Huh? Yes, I'm feeling very good. Have you turned on at all? What? It's <laughs> <laughs> so creepy. What's wrong with you, Brady? Brady's change, man. Why are you filming me? <laughs> Better luck next time, Brady. As the sun was setting, it was time to check out the crayfish festival. Such a crazy coincidence that we just happened to arrive in Luderitz at the biggest party weekend of the year. Crayfish. Yep. <laughs> the guy in the white coat, he's the man. Mm. Oh! Get in there. Fresh crayfish from the crayfish. Get in there, Mr. Ray. Fish festival. Mm. Oh, they put chili sauce on it. Give me a bite of that, mate. Ah. Mm. She got this good. We oh, got some meaty goodness here. It's so good. Yeah, <laughs> Mine's gone. Kind of just having a, a hangover day. We're watching episodes of, of Delos on Delos. It's pretty funny. But I just walked outside and it's been really hot here the last few days. But um, the fog that we sailed in through has poured into the bay here in Luderitz and it looks really cool. It's like old creepy Skeleton Coast vibes. Looks like a ghost ship. Are we a little bit hungover today? <laughs> We're having a business meeting. Oh. No, yeah, a bit hungover. Taking a few grandpas though, I feel pretty good. What? What the hell happened last night? A oh, lot. <laughs> I lost my phone. Brady got his phone. It was his stolen. phone was stolen out of his pocket. Mm -hmm. Again. He, he had the camera tied to his pants and someone cut it with a knife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they didn't steal it. That was cool. Somebody asked Lisa how much she was last night. <laughs> how much for you? <laughs> oh, she was dancing like a crazy one.
look at the Troutmans. I got Troutified. <laughs> it's called a Troutman sandwich. <laughs> Some people pay a lot of money for this one. Oh, really? <laughs> So we're up super early because we're going to the ghost town this morning and we're gonna watch the sunrise, which is really exciting. So we have this lady picking us up. Good morning. What do you know about this ghost town, bro? It's an abandoned mining town that the desert has sort of started to reclaim and it's pretty well preserved because of the dry climate, even though I think it's been abandoned for like 70 years or something. So cool, like I don't know, just walking in here and it's just no people. You see this? We're like at the top of the roof of this house, but we're standing on a sand dune, so the whole desert's just gone like <laughs> filled this entire building up with sand quite a ways up. You know the coolest part about it is like it's just open. You can just walk around and you can walk up all of the floors and all of the stories. Yeah, it's not like don't yeah. enter here. <laughs> I thought for sure like there would be some sort of barriers and you can like look in. Like you can with a lot of historical sites, like you can look in and see what the room is like. But you can just walk in these things. At your own risk. At your own risk. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty risky. This is a bit eerie. It's just mad. It's so surreal. It's kind of like... A zombie apocalypse is hit and this is what life would be like and humans trying to survive or well, this is how I feel anyway but it's just it's just crazy this is absolutely mental it's gonna explore this place was once a super rich German mining town at the time of World War I, 5 million carats, one ton of diamonds had been found here. These sought-after stones were so common that the workers simply had to crawl along the sand dunes, picking diamonds up as they went. It's weird to imagine that people actually really lived here. And they lived in style. It's insane to think that this ghost town once had an ice factory, school, hospital, bowling alley, bakery and a champagne bar. Oh shit. Climb up there. Yeah. Yeah. This is the way. Here, can I hand you my camera? Yeah, get it. Whoa. Wow. Did you get a feeling? Whoa. And then outside the window. Desert. So the whole first story is just like basically completely covered with sand. I don't have anything blocked off. Dude. So we're literally like on our knees in here because it's halfway full of sand. <laughs> Dick. Whoa. Man, every room is like another surprise. Think about all the sand that's been brought into this room through like one window. Really cool. And this door's permanently stuck halfway open. Lisa, oh. what are you doing? We just opened one of these plants there, and there came so much water out of it, and it was salt water. Because you my, tasted it. Yeah, because I tasted it, and Brady also tasted it, and now my fingers stink like. Like what? Fish. Kinda like it. <laughs> Yeah. 
Grady, what are you doing on the roof? Wow, the view from up here is so epic. So beautiful. <laughs> I knew nothing about diamonds really except for the movie Blood Diamond before we came here. And it's really, really cool to see like Namibia and especially this area in Luderitz was born just from diamonds. It's pretty crazy, huh? It's crazy, man. Like I never would have expected. And this town specifically was, was just built because people found diamonds in the desert while building a train track. And the crazy thing about it is they were finding diamonds so so often and so frequently, like it was in the moonlight and they would go and pick them up at night. Like they were fucking everywhere. Yeah, like it changed my view of diamonds. Yeah, definitely. Like I thought it was this hard thing to find and it was like, that's why it's so Like expensive. super rare, right? Yeah. Super rare, but here they're, they're everywhere. Yeah, no, it's really cool. And this whole town was built because of diamonds and like, this is in the middle of the desert and they would bring water in from Cape Town and they had a sausage factory and they had like, they were making ice and like everyone got fresh cold lemonade and they had a bowling alley and they had a bar. They had like everything. They were living luxurious lives out here in the desert just looking for these little stones, you know? So this room was where they made ice. Did they make it with sea water? Yes, they would pump seawater in. So this tank was filled with cold water just below like negative two degrees or something, but it wasn't frozen because it was constantly circulating. Those pipes went to the butcher Whoa. to keep that, so they were pumping cold water through the butcher to keep it cold. And this is an old school fridge. So they, would, they would make ice box out of these things. And then every person got a half an ice block a day. And this is the fridge. So they would keep a half an ice block on top. And then they put all their shit in the bottom to keep it cold. I never so would have thought. Each of the houses. No pun intended. Yeah. It's like they're a fridge. Yeah, exactly. I never would have thought they were making ice out of the desert. With seawater. Yeah. And then that wall of straw was just so moisture out of the air. And I've never seen a town like this before. The death of this incredible diamond town came in 1958. They basically left this area because there was bigger diamonds found south of here by the Orange River. And I mean, there's no way that they got all the diamonds out of here. So there's it's kind of crazy. There's still a lot of diamonds. Where are they, Alex? I don't know. I mean, right? They have to be. Yeah, of course. There's no way that they got every single diamond, you know? Come on. <laughs> I haven't seen one diamond so far. <laughs> Where are all the diamonds? Where's all the diamonds? They all get exported. <laughs> see some diamonds. <laughs> Who has them? Not me. I don't have any. <laughs> so actually I think everybody's pretty tired right now. Yeah. The day was pretty intense and this is gonna be our last night in Literates. Mm. And I think everybody's ready to sail. Is it? Yes. <gasps> yes. Let's get back to it. Yeah. Don't dance barefoot kids. That's the message for today. <laughs> <laughs> don't dance barefoot. <laughs> Good night. Good See you on the water. Ciao. But before we could set sail north, Brian had to spend some time in the engine room. So this is the damn little pump that started leaking on the passage here. Now there's a leak here as well on the main engine. And it's the one I put together with some, let's just say they were off-the-shelf parts from Madagascar and it lasted a while but when we were last in Cape Town I got uh, some proper seals the dead new seals and bearings and uh, I'll be able to put it back together we should be up and running pretty soon I think and then we'll take this one apart and see why it actually started leaking So that there's supposed to be a spring in there. See that? That's what's left of the spring. So what happened is these generic seals, the knockoff seals from Madagascar, they used a, uh, a non-stainless spring. And 
so as soon as that spring corroded away, the seal started leaking. Cheap, but it worked for a while. Uh, so making pretty good progress here. And so next step is we just we'll put this back in here and then press it in. And then there's one little trick to this is there's this thing called a water slinger, which it's really just an O-ring and it fits on here so that if the, the seal fails, the water runs down this tube and it hits this. And as this is spinning, it takes the water and it slings it off out through these holes right here. And then it sprays all over the place, which keeps the water away from the bearings when it, when it fails. So we'll put that back in. Hopefully we'll be good to go pretty soon. So now we'll put our Is there always some joy to get in here? Ooh, like a glove. Mm. Okay, now we just we don't have the right seal for this, so I just sort of cleaned it off with some sandpaper and I'll use a bit of normal RTV on it. Yeah, strong, give it a shot. Looking good, no leaks. Awesome, let's go sailing. Up next, we start exploring the crazy skeleton coast. climb some massive sand dunes, and see some insane wildlife. Okay, go! I'm <laughs> <laughs> on the wrong throat. <laughs> the wrong throat. <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. Look like some onions or something on the lens. Great. And here we have the Alexandra Blue, a rare species originally from California. She must be approached with caution or with food. What are you saying, you crazy Brit? I'm not even going to respond to that, Alex Blue. Full of shit. Ladies, if you've ever wondered what parade is like going downtown on meat, this is what it looks like. We walk in and there's a big squirrel with huge nuts. And it says, Hey ladies, you like these nuts? They're not real, right? Fuck. Lovely day, isn't it? I mean, I thought I'd spend some time in the garden today. Maybe plant my petunias. Sometimes. I think our crew is a bit crazy. There was a man from Gosham. He took out his bollocks to wash them. His wife said, Jack, if you don't pull them back, I'll stand on the bastards and squash them. Album drop's gonna be uh, later on this year, folks. If all goes well, we'll be in there shaking hands with the president of Namibia in a few hours. Ew, it smells like pussy. <laughs> It's fish! Disgusting. Kinda like it. <laughs> oh, I should have gone before I left the boat. <laughs> <laughs>